evening. Good to see everyone here this evening. Hope y'all had a good afternoon. I'm glad you could join us, whether you're either in the building, online, or over radio. We're just glad that you joined us tonight for Timberlake Baptist Church's Sunday night service. Um, I'm glad we're here. It's a little bit drier than it was this morning. I guess the rain kept a few away because um, we good Baptists are scared of water, right? <laughs> Y'all can laugh. It's okay. Even if it ain't funny, it just made me feel good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> now that all of you are fake laughing for me, let's get started with our precept for the day. Come from Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Thank God he's never changing, right? Our life may seem unstable sometimes, but our God is never unstable. <clears throat> As me and Esther was talking this morning uh, through someone else, he's never surprised of anything because it never knocks him off. He's always ready and prepared. And let's go to it tonight and open up in a word of prayer. Dear precious Father, we just thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, that Lord, we just have another beautiful day, Lord, and that we're able to come in your house. Lord, we thank you for the services this morning, Lord. I just thank you for how you move. Most of all, Lord, we thank you for that precious soul that was saved this morning, Lord. We, we just thank you that there's another one that Satan don't have, Lord. And Lord, we just pray tonight as we get to our prayer list, Lord, that you be with each and every one of these, Lord. You know the needs, Lord. Lord, we ask you to be with Tabitha and Josh Tickle as they're homesick, uh, Gary Salmons. Nancy Newton, uh, be with Amy Grafton, Carl Stammer, uh, be with Bill Snow, recovering from a procedure, also be with uh, Lena Martin in cancer, April Roberts in cancer, Lord we ask you to be with Brenda Haraway and her cancer, Lord just be with them this Tuesday as they figure out what to do next, Lord we ask you to be with Buddy Roberts, and Lord we ask you to reach down and touch the family of Doug Harper, wrap your arms around them. Show them your love and grace and your peace, Lord. Lord, we just pray tonight, Lord, as uh, we come to you tonight, Lord, as asking that you just speak to our hearts through the song, through your word. Lord, but I pray, Lord, that anyone that's within the sound of the message tonight and they're lost and undone, that this will be the night that they accept it, just like that young lady did this morning. Lord, we just praise you in advance for what you're going to do, Lord, because, Lord, we just, we just come expecting something big. It's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. If you'll stand, grab a songbook, turn to page 23, and we're going to do the, there's power in the blood. Page 23. <clears throat> Would you be free from your birth? Jesus, your King, this power. 
in the blood. Many churches are still taking, trying to take that out. If they're going to take the blood out of their church, they might as well shut the doors. Because they took Christ out. Without Christ, there's no hope. But thank God, there's hope in Christ and the blood that was shed on our behalf. If you got your bulletins to open up, let's look at a few uh, announcements. Oh, I, th I thought I had voices in my head again. <clears throat> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Tuesday Bible study. <clears throat> I'm proud to announce. They now have left the book of Romans. On Tuesday Bible study, they'll be beginning this week in Hosea chapter 1. Uh, if you've got nothing to do, come on out. Join them at 11 o'clock. It'll be worth your time. Also, men's prayer meeting, Monday, April 19th at 7 p.m. I don't know why he don't just put my name in here, but the speaker's going to be super skinny. It's not you, <laughs> Now y'all laugh. Now, I don't understand. <clears throat> Now, super skinny to be speaking that night. Be here for that, man. Uh, mark your calendars. This Wednesday night is going to be our special Easter communion service. Um, be here. It'll definitely be worth your time. It'll be bring someone with you. Um, it just begins Easter. Easter is my favorite time of the year. I mean, if, if it wasn't for Easter, where would we be? Sunday morning is Easter. 11 a.m. It'll be the Easter promise. Also, the uh, smaller children, the kingdom kids, will be having their Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April the 3rd. That's this coming Saturday at 2 p.m. There'll be free buckets to the first 50 kids. A special message, my favorite, there's going to be snacks and loads of fun. Thousands of eggs. Please come. Bring every kid you know around you. I would tell you just load them up even if you don't know them, but at least let the parents know you took them first. Um, also, Tuesday night, anybody that has time to come help, they need lots of help to pack eggs. They're meeting here at 6.30 in the ladies' classroom to fill all that, them eggs up with all that wonderful candy. We're trying to hook Kevin up with some business. <laughs> um, also, <laughs> Kevin's like, I'm already so slammed, I don't need nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Eternal Broadcasting is also having an all-day listing and giveaway April the 10th. Um, that Saturday from 9 a.m. to 6. Everything will be on broadcast live that day. Um, be sure to tune in. And mark your calendars for revival services May the 2nd through the 5th. Uh, as Dr. Kenneth and Brenda Cloud will be joining us. He'll be preaching and they'll be singing. Um, <clears throat> revival. Definitely what our country needs. That's what we need as Christians. Some of us have come watered down. We need revival just as much as the world does. And if it don't start with us, it'll never get out there. So we need to start preparing ourselves now and inviting the others then. Uh, with that being said, as we get to our offering, um, if you're in the building, you can put it in the box if you'd like to. Um, brown envelopes for building, white for tithes and offering. Um, also, if you'd rather do credit or debit card, you can see Ken back there. He's got a little machine. He's going to run it right through for you. Strip it right off of you. And then uh, if you'd rather mail it in, or get, uh, you can mail it in to P.O. Box 10,004, Danville, Virginia, 24543. And if you'd rather, you can give online. Just a quick, easy step by our website. And it's real easy to get you through. With that, let's pray over our offering before we have a video. Um, let's pray. Dear President Father, we just thank you for your many blessings, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, just uh, for the... Uh, Act of worship, Lord, of giving. Lord, we just thank you allow us to uh, borrow what's yours. Lord, and it's just our job to give back to you. Lord, we ask you to use this offering and this building fund, Lord, just to go to further your will, Lord. And Lord, just to see souls saved. Lord, we just, uh, just pray as the ministries are continued through these offerings, that you continue to bless each and every ministry. It's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> now we're going to watch a video called The Old Love Letter from the McCamies. Thank you. 
you got your Bible, hold them there. Let me tell you something. This will be, hold them up, keep them there. The biggest encyclopedia, just don't let it hit you in the head. This is the only thing a thousand years from now that will still be here. Amen. It's the only thing that's going to last. The clothes you're wearing, the pew you're sitting on, the building you're in, it's going to all be gone. But this is for all eternity. All God's people said, Amen. take your Bibles tonight and open them up if you would. To for 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 14. We started last week talking about three ways we know we're filled with the Holy Spirit. That means controlled by, led by, guided by. And we only got to the introduction, so tonight we're going to start with number one. He's given us his concise, concise commandments. Now listen to me. If y'all will be still, be quiet. <laughs> be awake. I'll get you out quick. But if you sleep and you start walking around the building, I'm going to keep you here to midnight. All right? Just give me, give me 20 minutes at the least, 25 at the most, and you're going to be out of here. Okay? This is important tonight. He's given us his concise commandments. This is not optional. It's not Burger King. His concise commandments. He guides us using the Word of God. And folks, one thing's for sure, the Bible is not ambiguous, it's clear. Brother Flanagan and I were talking before church tonight, and he was telling me about a situation this week in the Congress where a Republican took a Bible in and started arguing and def defending uh, or, or putting down abortion, trying to show biblically it was wrong. And another congressman stood up and said, there's no room for the Bible in the Congress of the United States. Is that not what they said, Brother Flanny? No room. This Look, I would have never heard, thought I'd hear anybody say that. But it was said this week. You know why they don't want the Bible in the Congress? Because they don't want to live by it. They don't believe in God that wrote it. The Bible tells us what we should do and not do. The Bible's concise in the straight and the narrow path that we're to follow after we've been told where to go and what to do. He's been gracious. He, he could have let us live without the Bible. Can you imagine living the Christian life without the Bible? I can't. <laughs> I couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. He was gracious to give us that old love letter, which will speak to your heart and soul. You'll be captured by every word. You'll be moved by it if you listen to it, follow it. Often we ignore these commands and we listen to the world. That's our problem. We're allowing too much of the world in our minds and in our hearts. This detours us and gets us down the broad road of construction, of destruction. Folks, we need to stay on the straight and narrow. Amen? Not to be saved, but to serve. And we don't need to be on the broad way which leads to destruction because there is no construction on the road of destruction. Nothing's built. The Holy Spirit has sealed us in our heart after our salvation to show us the truth and guide us the correct way the path of God's perfect will for our lives the voice of the devil and this world is the voice of deception and lies we've been talking about that for weeks this is the gift and blessing that's worth more than all the world or its false leaders has to offer I, I don't know how to express to you how much I love this old book. I, the most encouraging thing I can tell you young people tonight and, and the older people as well, but young people because they got a little while further to go if Jesus tarries. When I was a young man in Awana's Christian school, Sunday school, no matter youth department, no matter what we were doing, they were constantly putting this in our heart and mind. 
I cannot express to you how hard I worked to memorize scripture when I was a kid. When we were in Christian school, once a month we got a new section of scripture. Not one verse, not two verse, a whole chapter we had to memorize. Isaiah 53, John chapter 3. I mean, we had to memorize it and we only got three helps and if we didn't get it right, we had to go back and start all over. Try it again. I thought they was the meanest people that ever lived on God's green earth. Making us memorize all that scripture and putting it on our report card too. I mean, there was a line of scripture memorization on your report card. So you had to work at it. But when I sit down there and I study the Word of God and I'm putting messages together, I can't explain it to you. I wish I could. I wish I could make you visually understand what I'm thinking in my head. It would help you love that Bible and read that Bible and study that Bible. Just little fragments of Scripture come in my mind. And see, I got a good friend named Ken Bipperman. They put a little program on my computer called Sword Searcher. And when that little phrase comes in my mind, if I can't remember where it's at, I put that phrase in that Sword Searcher and hit bing and pew, there it is. And I'm amazed. And I'm thankful. Y'all sleeping on me? You want to get out early? I'm thankful. I can't tell you how invaluable that has been to me in my ministry. I just got done. I meant to show them to y'all, but I forgot, so just forgive me. Uh, brother, uh, who are you, big boy? No, I'm back in the back. No, I'm talking to you. Tony. So you get old, you forget people's names. See, Tony was up here making fun of how long I was in the book of Romans. Well, let me let you know I got it all in print. And it ain't but seven books. Raise them up and show them, Minnie. You got them in your hand. There you go. Got them in print. Get, get you a set. No, they just, hold them up so he, he's blind. He can't see. Just turn. <laughs> he's blind as a bat and can't hear either. Boy, he's in bad shape. That's three years. Amen. Three years studying the book of Romans. Aren't you glad now we're going to Hosea? Amen. We'll be in there six years. But anyway, hey folks, there would be no way under God's green earth I could have done this if it hadn't been for this. And how they put it in my mind when I was little and when I was young. I'm telling you, God will, God will take what little you have to offer. I'm telling Mother Flagon, I can't believe tomorrow night what I'm going to have in my hands an opportunity of a lifetime an opportunity of a lifetime and I can't it's not because I'm smart and don't you say amen right there it's not because of my abilities but I honestly believe it's because of my faithfulness to the word of God and the love of the scriptures and trying to teach people the Bible because there's nothing else to teach people the Bible's the truth we must become adept to deciphering between the truth of God and the lies of the devil. And the only way you're going to know the difference is through the Word of God. We must become adept to know the Bible. First of all, let's look at A. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14. Of these things, put them in... <laughs> I hear people say it all the time, preach the same stuff all over and over again. Well, when you learn it, I'll say something different. When you learn it, I'll say something different. Any school teacher would tell you the greatest tool in their arsenal as a teacher is repetition. Repeating it over and over and putting it into the minds of the students over and over. Y'all remember my algebra teacher? Her name was Ms. Adams. We called her Lizard Lips. Because she'd say three words and go, she'd say three words, we called her lizard lips. But she was probably the most effective teacher. I hated algebra. I just did make it through algebra one, and then I met her with algebra two, and I wanted to go back to algebra one. But she was so adept to every class repeating the principles. And 
every other week she'd add a new principle and you would have to she'd go over it and 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 over it. When I was done with Algebra 2, I loved Ms. Adams. Because that which I didn't understand with my teacher in Algebra 1, I understood in Algebra 2 because she was adept to repeating the principles over and over till I understood them. You're not going to understand everything you read in the Bible the first time you read it. You're going to have to study it over and over. And you're going to find out new things every time you read it. Say amen. amen. Putting in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words, no profit, talking about everything else in the world but God, but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved not unto the preacher, not unto your family, but unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You see, if you study the Word of God, you'll work. You will work. If you study the Word of God, you'll accomplish things for God. You don't have to be highly educated. You don't have to have a lot of abilities. Just be faithful to the book. Amen? I think of preachers like Mays Jackson. I still remember messages he preached 25 years ago. Not because he was a scholar. He was never a professor. But he knew this book. And he loved this book. The first words. Now Shelby sitting right back there. She would not lie for me. Say amen Shelby. And she loved Mays Jackson much as I do. First words out of Mays Jackson when he walked up to a pulpit was not hey hi y'all. Take your Bible dearly beloved. Let's go to this chapter and we're going to preach a message on no. First words out of his mouth. Because that's what he was there for. To preach the word of God. He didn't have a lot of degrees on the wall. He didn't have a lot of abilities. Lord, he, thank God he never tried to start a quartet. He'd be him and Sean would have had a good quartet. <laughs> Sean Horbett, for those of y'all. Some people don't know the difference between the Sean's. Sean, uh, Sean in the back can sing. Sean in the front, we're praying for him. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It's a noise, all right. <laughs> Better put you and Mays Jackson together, the roof would have fell in. I don't know. <laughs> Mays didn't have a lot of abilities, but he did good, listen to me, with his availability. He did what God made him available to do. Rightly dividing the word of truth. But you better know the Bible and tell it right. Don't twist it. Don't twist it. Oh, listen to me. Shame, uh, shun, profane, that's wicked and heathenish. And vain, that's selfish and self-serving. Babylon's talking. For they will increase more unto more ungodliness. And their world, word will eat as a stuff a canker, an ulcer, gangrene, out of whom Hymenius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have what? Let me encourage you to do something. Folks, listen. Be careful who you listen to on the internet preaching. Be careful who you listen to on the television preaching. Be careful what books you read. Brother Flanagan was telling me he loves books over 100 years old, and I agree with him. Because these new books, they, they twist stuff. These new preachers, they twist things. But them old preachers, they had it right. They didn't waver. They didn't falter. They didn't flunk out. They didn't quit. They kept their convictions. And I'm here to tell you tonight, stick to the old-fashioned way. Stick to the Word of God. Know what you're talking about. Understand it and know how to share it. Say amen. That's the key here. If we will seek and study, God will empower you and I to do great things for God far beyond what you ever dreamed you could do. If you will just seek Him and study His Word, I, I'm not picking on people. I love y'all. If you don't have a Bible to carry in your hand, go buy you one. If you don't have money, stop by my desk. I'll give you one. Carry a Bible with you. Carry it with you everywhere you go. Let me tell you something. I, I could tell you some people tonight who probably love the Word of God more today than yesterday because of the trials they're going through. When you're going through deep waters. That Bible's there for you. Your friends won't be. Get in trouble. You'll see how many friends you got. Get sick. You'll see how many friends you got. I'm telling you. Folks, we have got to realize the value of seeking God through studying His Word. All right, B, y'all doing halfway good. B, He will 
speak and show. If you'll seek and study, he will speak and show. You'll loudly hear from him. Look at John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth who lives within you, who is God, is come. This was Jesus before the day of Pentecost. He will guide you into how much truth? You'll study the Bible. God will reveal truth to you. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you three words. Things to come. Folks, please, be here next Sunday for Easter. We're going to have a great service. And uh, Jamie's going to have the biggest choir he ever had. That's all I'm going to tell you. Just be here next Sunday morning for Easter. We're going to have a ball. We're going to have a good time. We're going to rejoice. I'm going to bring you all some handkerchiefs so you can learn how to wave them handkerchiefs. Shout praise God. Say amen. Then on the Sunday after when we come back, we're going to start talking about the tribulation. I've learned the one way to get people closer to God is to make them understand how close the tribulation is. How close it is to us leaving this old world. How quickly it's going to happen. Blink your eye. You don't have time to go home. You don't have time to call your loved ones. You don't have time to talk to God. You're going to be out of here. And our work is going to be done. And God's work will just begin. And those who don't know Christ, who die without Jesus, I want to tell you something, they're in for hell on earth. You think COVID was bad. COVID ain't nothing to what's coming. It's just the chip off the iceberg that's about to wreck this old world. Folks, the Bible says one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit and one of his names is the Spirit of Truth. He's the one, the, he's with the one with the Father. He's one with the Son. They are united and inseparable from each other. We know, therefore, there is nothing deceptive or perverse in the Holy Spirit of God. He's the only progenitor of truth there is in this world. You better turn him loose in your life. Amen? And according to the scriptures I just read to you, the only way to turn him loose is to give him this. He will show you. He will repeat to you the things you read to him. The Holy Spirit's a little yak back. How many of y'all remember 20 years ago you used to sell them yak backs? You'd say it and he'd say it back to you. That was called the yak back. Kids loved it. it. drove parents crazy. But I'll tell you, it'll help you as a Christian to let the Holy Spirit be your yak back. Let him repeat to you what you've learned, what you've heard in the time you needed. John 14, uh, 17 says this, and it's loud and clear. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I was talking to someone before church and they were talking about somebody doing things on Sunday. When I was a kid, they wouldn't even let me cut paper on Sunday. They wouldn't sew on Sunday. You didn't mow grass on Sunday. Say amen. amen. Sunday you went to church, went home and each sir I talked to each other. That's what Sunday was. Not anymore. It's not the Lord's day anymore. And it, it was upsetting him because what used to be ain't no more. And let me tell you why it's that way. They don't know our God. They don't care about our God. They don't know our Savior. They're unregenerate. They're lost. They don't care about church. Sunday don't mean anything to them. Why? It's just another day. But to me and you is the day Jesus rose out of the grave. Say amen. It's an honored day. It's the first day of the week. It's the day we worship God. It's the day we lift up his name. It's the day we listen to his word. We gather and spend the whole day with God. I want to tell you something. I'm not going to apologize for what I'm saying, so don't ask me to. I want to tell you something. We need to be adding more church services, not ending them. We need to be serving more, not doing less. Why? Because this is the Lord's day. Give it to Him. Worship Him. Walk with Him. John 15, 26, but the Comforter. Well, I didn't finish the first one, did I? Uh, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it's, they see and know Him not, neither know Him. But ye know Him. For He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Honey, when the Holy Spirit moves in, He's there to stay. You might
might put him in the back seat. You might lock him in the back closet. You may mute him. You may grieve him. But he's there. He's with you wherever you go, whatever you do. That makes my knees knit, uh, knock and my liver quiver and my knees ain't touched each other in 40 years. Why? Because that'll make you think about where you're going, think about what you're doing before you do it because God's with you. Amen? He's with you. Now John 15, 26. But when the comforters come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of what? He doesn't lie. Which proceeded from the Father, and he shall testify of me. I want to tell you something. If, I, I don't mean any harm, but there's some denominations that they lift up the Holy Spirit higher than they do Jesus, and the Holy Spirit would never do that. The Holy Spirit always lifts Jesus up. That's just the way the Bible teaches it. And, and there's no part of the Trinity any more important than the other, but they all work together. Jesus is the Savior. The Holy Spirit is the Comforter. There's two different jobs. The Holy Spirit lifts up Jesus because he knows what Jesus did. He knows what Jesus did to save your soul. He knows what Jesus did to give you eternal life. He knows the sacrifice the Son made. And he knows what it will do for you. And he knows his job is to push Jesus. He's Jesus' greatest cheerleader. Say amen. 1 John 4, 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Listen to this. Because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. God is greater than Satan. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak of the world, and the world heareth them. The world loves Washington. It's sending them checks. The world loves Hollywood. They're telling them it's all right to live any way you want to. They love Hollywood. They love Washington. They hate the church. And they despise Jesus. But there's a way which seemeth right unto man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. It says in verse 6, We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not, heareth not us. Hereby know we the what? The difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I love you tonight, but God's commandments are concise. It's not hard to understand what God wants us to do. Amen? What's hard is you and me don't want to do it. We don't want to do it. The world definitely doesn't want to do it. But we have got to grab a hold of this blessed old love letter. Let it touch your heart and soul. Be captured by every word and a witness untold. Folks, we need to love the Bible. We need to spend more time in the Bible and understand its conciseness. Listen to me now. This is it, and we're going home. Y'all ain't going to believe it, but we are. Its conciseness is God's niceness because God doesn't make you figure out what he's saying. He's clear. He don't leave me you wondering trying to figure it out. He's been concise. It's the greatest gift a man could ever be given. When I first went to work at McDonald's, we had to work eight hours in the basement watching videos. They had to learn a video on the, on the Big Mac, the Quarter Pounder with cheese, the Double Cheeseburger, the Fish Filet. They didn't have chicken nuggets back in as a long time ago. The Apple Pie, French Fry Station, you watch videos, and you watched them, and you watched them, and you watched them. But when you went upstairs, and they put that monkey suit on you, and that crazy hat, you kind of knew what you was fixing to do. Because it had been putting, put down for you to follow. In simple, easy steps. Simple, easy. What are you trying to say? I'm trying to tell y'all, whether you're 10 or 110, you can be God's servant. You can know God's will. You can walk God's way, and you can do God's work. And you can see wondrous things take place because the Word of God is concise. It is not ambivalent. 
Amen? Oh, you'll have some eggheads who try to quibble on this, that, and the other, trying to be an egghead that'll say the Bible has flaws, and they don't know, they're dumb as a box of rocks. Amen? There are no flaws in the Bible. There's no flaws in this book. It's perfect. It has the answer for every problem in your life. Being the spirit of truth, anything that comes from him has the universal effect to oppose everything that is false and fictitious. This is what I'm worried about. I'm going to go home. I know what the Bible says, and then I see how Christians are living, and God's not confused. God's concise. By studying, listening, memorizing, sharing his word, it is an automatic protection against the lies and the deceptions that are thrown at us every hour of every day relentlessly. Read the book and you'll know the lies and you can shut your eyes and close your ears and you don't have to listen to it. Amen? Because you know the truth and the truth will set you free. His voice is always the voice of God. And we can trust the Holy Spirit. We cannot trust any other voice we hear. He opens the treasures of the truth and he puts them down deep in our heart. And that's where they stay. And you know, think about this. As long as the yak back is down there, the Holy Spirit, he's going to keep throwing it back at you when you need it. And you need it. And I need it every day. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed. The Lord will not reveal anything other than what God in the Scriptures has told us through the Holy Spirit. Hearing the scriptures and hearing the spirit of truth will create something in us the world cannot duplicate. It's two things. It's called peace and it's called calmness. Tonight, if we seek and study, he will speak and show. Simple as that. It's not complicated. Preacher, you didn't teach us anything new tonight. I didn't need to teach you anything new tonight. I need to remind you of the old thing. I need to remind you. Tonight, take this old love letter. Give it to the Lord. Because listen to me. I say this and we're going home. Everything's in the Savior's hands. And if you're with the Savior, you're safe. You're blessed. Tonight as we play this, play this invitation, I want every Christian in this building to say, Lord, I know everything's in your hands. I'm going to take it out of my hand. And I'm going to quit messing with it. And I'm going to trust you. You read your Bible every day. I'm going to pray every day. I'm going to study every day. I'm going to share the Bible every day. And you'll protect me and direct me and affect me and affect others. I hope tonight you'll put everything in the Savior's hands. Father, take this invitation. God, I've preached the best I know how. Father, I ask in Jesus' precious and holy name, help us have a love for this blessed old book. Help us love it more than life itself, more than food, more than pleasure, more than things. Help us, Lord, take our Bibles everywhere we go and have to be a part of everything we do. Speak to these people. Bless them. Help them, Lord. I know you love them. I love them. I know the Holy Spirit loves them. Help them love you now. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. a shepherd, for he knows our every need, leads us by the gentle ones, there are hungry soul he feeds, as a little
church and father we just thank you for your many blessings lord we just thank you for your word tonight lord Lord, we just pray lord that we just take this word lord that we leave here with it lord just allowing it to control our life lord lord help us lord just to lean on you more as we go forward lord we just ask to ask you to be with each and every one i'm here whether they was listening or in the building lord just bless them Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. Lord, we ask you to be with all our prayer needs. It's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen.